All right, so today I was mixing concrete between, you know, my little funny house. Why am I telling you all, all my business? Because if you see my energy start to fall in the video, it's because I leave all my energy in the concrete, right? Yeah. So I was running through this series on organic chemistry, but then every video I put up, people just talk about molds, 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 molds. So, you know, I'm a man of the people and I give the people what they want. So today we're going to do Maximize time spent on this video watching all my videos as a matter of fact you should review the topic first Mold citation water of crystallization is in this video. Try the question first actually Find that question January 2017 question 1 chemistry and Try and do it yourself and then come back and take in my solution and when you finish follow up Follow up with similar questions, you know, that's how you do it Alright, so the question reads, an experiment was carried out to determine the number of moles of water of crystallization N that are present in hydrated iron 2 sulfate FeSO4.NH2 A sample of the solid was analyzed for its iron 2 sulfate content by titrating it with a standard solution of potassium manganate KMN4 Define the term standard solution Alright, so in the end you know you're going to be finding out about this N for sure, right? Anytime you're doing um, Anytime you do water of crystallization, they normally want you to find out the number of moles of water for every mole of whatever it is, whether it's copper, this, or iron sulfate, or whatever. Alright, so the first part of the question asks about standard solution. That's easy. That's just a definition. A standard solution is a solution whose concentration is known, accurately known. One mark. Move along. Next part, part B asks us to complete a table so you'd have obeyed the instructions and done the question already so you know what we are talking about. So the mass of beaker, sample of mass of beaker, find the mass of the sample, take it away, boom, bam, bing, get the mass of the sample here. One mark again, move along. So these are the, this is the easy part. So next up, they wanted us to get the readings on the arm, on the burette. Remember your readings going this way, 25 to 26, 26 to 27, they're going down now because you're using up. The, so there's like 25.5, you get your readings there based on this, 25.6. 26.3, 24.5, move along. So in the next part, you're taking them final readings and you're putting it into the table. And you're subtracting from initial volume. So your final volume, take your initial volume. Because remember, your burette doesn't always hit back zero now. When you're taking it, you get, when you um, fill it up, you might drop it to 1 or 2.05, whatever. So you just work with that instead of trying to get zero, zero all the time. All right, so you minus. And you get 24.6, 24.25, 24.35, and you get the volume of how much of ever, whatever it was used. Um, what well we had um, 0.01 mole per dm, you put us in manganate. And next up, they ask us to find the average volume of the solution used. You put us in manganate. So um, add up all them readings, add up all the volumes, and divide by 3. Bam! Average. So about here in the question is where things start to get interesting. Interesting. Calculate the number of moles of KMN4 in the average volume determined in C. All right. So this is where you have to start to jump into your calculations groove here. So you have 0 0.01 mole per dm cube KMN4. You have 24.4 cm cube average used. So now, how many moles in this? This is how you do it. Remember, one dm cube is a thousand cm cube. So one thousand cm cube has 0 0.01 moles. One cm cube has 0 0.01 over 1000 moles and then you can find the 24. So a lot of people with moles have problems as soon as the moles touch down that's where as soon as they get moles problems start because moles now boy calculation because calculations calculations and then they'll some people will try and learn of all the formulas and stuff like that which is okay if that works for you let that float your boat but the best thing you can do in chemistry, physics, and maths to understand calculation questions like these is to master the art of finding for one. You need to understand what I mean by this. Anytime, look at this situation here. 
we wanted to find out how many moles are in 24.4 cm cube. So first I found out how many moles there are in 1 cm cube. So this is the key part right here. 1 cm cube has this amount. So instead of trying to learn off this formula and what to do every time you see this situation, how about you just learn to find for 1? Finding for 1 means divide by this. So like if I have 1000 cm cube is this, 1 cm cube will be that here over the 1000. And this this situation comes up so many times in maths, physics, and chemistry. So 1 cm cube finding for 1 was the breakthrough here. Now this is an easy question. Some people may, may have no problems with this. But, but to some people this is a stumbling block. And I think the best way for you to get over this stumbling block is to learn it logically by finding for 1. So 1 cm cube is 0 0.01 over 1000 moles. So therefore 24.4 cm cube is 0 0.01 over 1000 multiplied by 24. Point four, use the calculator, use the bit most accurate and say I can find for now because we are going to have to use this number back again. So this here is the number of moles of KMNO4 in this volume. So in part D they gave us an equation here which is lucky of you because you know this equation actually could not be given this um, equation of potassium manganate reacting with iron sulfate. This is the ionic equation here. So as shown in equation one, one mole of as shown in as shown in the equation, one mole of manganate reacts with five moles of Fe2+. Um, so one mole to five, one mole to five. So using the results in, in the part before, calculate the number of moles of Fe2+, plus in 25 cmq, aliquot, um, that reacts. Okay, let me do the question. One mole of MnO4 reacts with five moles of Fe2+. Plus. So, so what's happening here? What's happening here? We just worked out in the previous question how many moles how many moles of KMnO4 jump out in the dance? It's about this amount of moles. So if one mole of MnO4 would react with five moles, then this amount of moles of MnO4, there should be a negative sign here, because the K is balancing off. Anyhow, so um, this amount of moles of that, which we got from the previous question, highlight, highlight that. So this amount of moles of that, which we got from the previous question, is going to react with 5 times because that's the ratio 1 to 5 so just hit that 5 multiplication and you'll figure out how much moles of iron 2 plus we had dancing in that conical flask and that's the answer right there so the second part of the question is to work out how much moles of Fe2 plus in 250 cm cube alright so if 25 cm cube had so many moles well 250 will have multiplied by 10 that's logical but if you want to go through a nice little equation and find for 1 again which is the best way to do all these types of questions, in my opinion. This amount of iron 2 plus in 25 cm cube, because this is what we just found. This is how much iron, um, iron, ions we have in 20, cations we have in 25 cm cube. So if 25, I wrote, I write it like this because I'm going to use the fine for one principle. So if 25 cm cube contains this amount, 1 cm cube will contain this over the 25 so you don't need to know when to divide or how to divide or when to multiply it's too much with this finding for one you just follow this step all the time and it's going to take you to the promised land all right so 0 0.0122 or divided by the 25 and therefore 250 cm cube will be 0 0.0122 divided by 25 multiplied by 250 it's a two-step process all the time so the answer is 0.0122 moles of Fe2 plus in the big 250. So 250 will contain that amount. All right, so the next part, part E, given that one mole of FeSO4 contains one mole of that ions, use the result. What are we trying to find? What are we trying to find? To calculate the mass of the anhydrous FeSO4 in a 250 cm cube volumetric class. Part E. This question has parts like a rainbow. Just not to use the whole alphabet. All right, let me break down this part E. There's one mole of FeSO4. This is what they told us for every one mole of iron two plus. We, we didn't even need them to tell me that we could see that. The formula FeSO4. There's one mole of Fe in the whole formula, right? So one mole of why am I saying Fe? Iron in the whole SO um, in the whole iron sulfate, right? So zero point one two two moles this is from what we just got therefore you'd expect if there's this amount of moles of fe2 plus iron there'd be iron 2 plus you'd expect that there's going to be 0 0.0122 moles of the whole iron sulfate because that one to one ratio 
So um, this is the conversion because remember we're going to grams in this one. One mole of the iron sulfate has 152 grams. So therefore, 0.0122 moles of iron sulfate will contain and they already give us the one. So one mole is here. So we don't need to even find for one. We just need to multiply it. So you see how this fine for one thing is just like gold. All right, so this is 152 times 0.0122, get answer. So this is the amount of grams of anhydrous FeSO4. So this is the amount of grams of anhydrous um, iron sulfate that was in total in the 250 cm3. So now coming down to a close, part F, they're just going on and on. Calculate the mass of water in the hydrated iron sulfate using this formula. So they even gave you the formula. They didn't need to, but here we have a little nice formula for us to follow. So the mass of water is going to be the mass of hydrated iron sulfate or the mass of anhydrous. And they tell you which part to take your answer from to what Christmas. Alright, so mass of hydrated iron sulfate, take out the mass of the anhydrous. That's obvious. The mass of the one with the water, the mass of the one with all water, that's what anhydrous means. With all the water is going to be the actual mass of the water right with water without water take the two away you'll get what is the mass of the water remember we are working towards end so we need to find out things about this water we need to find out this water business to just find out what n is about so we we get in there because we find out the mass of the water in this it's be like a little adventure in these questions but i know some people is is a kind of nightmare adventure so next up we have to calculate the number of moles of water in the hydrated sample. So this is a basic changing of grams to moles, grams to moles. I remember water is 18 grams. They didn't need to give us that, but it did 18 grams in every one mole because 18 is 2 plus 16, right? Um, 1 for the hydrogen, 16 for the oxygen, 18. So if 18 grams, oh, we're going to find for one again. Oh, we're going to do it again. 18 grams in every one mole, one gram in every 1 over 18 moles of H2 so 1.3056 grams which is how much we found we found just now this is how much water there are there is in grams all right so this is going to be 1 over 18 times 1.3056 moles so boom we find out how many moles of water being used yeah so part H now, N is going to be the number of moles of, so we come to N, we find out N. But look, there are more parts after H, boy. anyhow, you'll see that when you cross that bridge. So um, N is the number of moles, and they give us a nice little formula here. The number of moles of water in the hydrated sample divided by the number of moles of anhydrous Fe, um, iron sulfate. Because this is like the 1 in the equation, this is 1 to whatever the ratio or the number of n is so this that's why this formula works but even if you didn't understand how the formula works you just plug in your values boop, bop, and you'll get 5.945 which will give you rounded off to 6 to the nearest whole number because remember n you want to you want to choose a whole number you don't have this in your formula so 6 to the nearest whole number is n so so your formula will look something like this there's a 6 going here we take all that journey around the whole wide world and reach each or whatever in the questions just to find out that six. Part I and part G. Oh, part I and part G is nice. You know why it's nice? Because in part I and part G, you, do, you didn't need to figure out the rest of the questions to do part I and part G. So you know what that means? Even if you meet a hurdle in the question and you see moles and you're trying and you can't get through, look through the whole question and find the other parts. There may be a part sent just for you just for you to collect some marks on your way out all right so what is the color change at the end point of titration of the color change purple to colorless everybody know that manganate you just need to make sure that you're going from um, 7 plus to 2 plus eh, because that's purple to colorless if this wasn't in acid conditions it would be going from uh forget i think it will go to some kind of dirty red kind of brown scene all right so you can check this back out uh, I, we, I don't know if that comes for c sec or if i'm mixing that up with keep chemistry but yeah purple to colorless the titrant is self indicating that's part g they asked us um state one reason why there's no need for an in to add an indicator in this titration because it went from purple to colorless you don't need no extra indication to see when um the point of neutralization reach the titrant which is the potassium manganate just does that for you so 
you don't need any um any kit and that brings that question to a close so let me know in the comments if there's a specific question that you want me to do i may do one or two more molds question then i'm going into ad maths so the ad maths people whole weekend you best be doing ad maths past paper questions because past paper questions is the fastest way to cover a lot of topics at this 11th hour i mean ad maths ad maths exam is right around the corner so i think accounts exam is today accounts people blessings full hand gesture